Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome to Robert's Porch. I'm your host, Robert. All right, Ring of Honor Final Battle 2023 review. Um, as we know, Tony Khan bought Ring of Honor last year and has put on some really great matches. This Final Battle, one of the marquee events for Ring of Honor history, the 22nd annual Bobby Cruz, the ring announcer, has been the 20 Final Battles. It t delivered in every aspect it should have. Um, it was, again, it's my opinion. Pro wrestling is 90% opinion, 10% fact. My opinion is this show delivered completely 100%. You had the matches that should be over the top good were. You had some stories that have been built through the, ring, the 42 Ring of Honor shows. 42 now? Yeah, 42 Ring of Honor shows on Honor Club. You had some of the stuff built on AEW TV as well. You had matches placed on the card... That made sense. And we're, we're going to run down this card. We're going to run down that real quick here. So the first match was the Triple A Mega title. Obviously that's going to be one of those high flying kind of up and at matches. You had a six man. The ROH World six man titles on the line. That's more of a brute match. Then you had the I Quit match. You follow that up with a squash match. They give people a chance to go. Okay. I mean this show is five hours long people. So you needed to have that kind of moments to rest you had the survival of the fittest sixth way elimination match that was wild as can be and the end of it was just nuts then you had the pure wrestling title match so you know you went from a high craziness match to just a pure mat based match where you can kind of sit there and go all right what's going to happen you know and then you had a fight of hoss fight that had history to it then you had the fight to honor jay briscoe the match lasted 20 minutes turned into a fight without honor match um, thanks to Mark Briscoe thanks to Tony Khan when that 30 minutes total of that those two pieces of the match 30 minutes later you were able to go okay you had a little proven draw match Eddie Kingston Anthony Henry so it's like okay you had time to breathe then you had a 30 minute women's match to main event the show um, so yeah you had a little bit of everything um, if you watched it live on honor club um, only way you could watch this match was on our club. So if you watched it live last night and watched the very, very, very beginning, before the zero hour, you got a match, which I thought was really neat. Before the announcers even, so there was no announce team for it. It was just two guys out there putting on a match. You had J.D. Griffey and Gringo Loco. Because um, I started it late. I kind of rewound to get to the beginning. I'm like, wait, what's this? No commentary. There weren't that many fans there. I was kind of like, oh, a lot of people there. That's not good. I'm like, wait a minute, there's no commentary. This must be, like, before the zero hour. So I watched it. It was about a seven-minute match, I think, five or seven minutes. It was J.D. Griffey, Gringo Loco. I know Gringo Loco from GCW. I know J.D. Griffey from the Shane Taylor Productions. I'm like, this could be good. It was pretty good. I gave it a short match. I give it a three-star with, with J.D. Griffey getting the victory. Um, they just went out there and put on a match. It's like, oh, cool. And then you had the zero hour start with your, where you had Tyler Valkyrie with her husband Johnny TV versus Jasmine Alor. Uh, Tyler Valkyrie, former women's champion. She is one of the best women wrestlers in the world. Hopefully she'll get into the women's division of Ring of Honor, if not AEW. And she need, she's one of those you need to put on TV. She needs to be in title matches. She needs to be represent the women's, women's um, division in AEW Ring of Honor. Jasmine Allure, she's one of those that she needs to work on a little bit, what she's doing. She's not bad, but she just needs she has some work that needs done. She's pretty green. I ended up giving the match two and three quarters with Tal Valkyrie getting into victory. Next up, we had one of the, I would say, better tag teams in the world that go, they don't really get a lot of attention from the Von Erichs. Marshall Von Erich and Ross Von Erich. Um, they, their family has the movie The Claw or whatever it's called coming up. Their dad, um, is it Carrie or, let's see here, Kevin Von Erich, okay. Um, yeah, the Von Erich family, we know the tragedy the Von Erich family has gone through over the years. I know Kevin Von Erich went into the WWE Hall of Fame back in 2009. I was actually at that Hall of Fame ceremony with Stone Cold, Coco Beware, um, uh, Finkel, uh, who else was part of that? Um, God, there's somebody else that was a part of that. Funks were part of that. Um, so yeah, I, I was actually there for them. I'm like, ah, that's kind of neat. Um, so yeah, 
the Von Erichs, they, they need they need a place. Um, they're a heritage family that Marshall and Ross are just uber talented as a tag team. Just those ta they just need to be, just need to be themselves and go out there and fight. And hopefully they get a chance in Ring of Honor, if not AEW. Love to see them in GCW, maybe some other independent companies to get you know, get some more reps. Um, according to Cage Match, they were in uh, MLW back in May. I don't know what they've done since. But uh, so hopefully we see more of them on AEW television and Ring of Honor. If not, hey, I would have, have an issue with them going to NXT and kind of build up in WWE for a while. That would be kind of neat. Seeing them on WWE television as champions, tag team champions. They went up against the Outrunners, Truth, Truth Magnum, and Turbo Floyd. We've seen some of them in AEW, kind of a squash team. They part, they're part of OVW a lot. This match was okay. It was six minutes long. Nothing to brag about. I give it two and three quarters. The Von Erichs getting the win by the Family Claw. Um, I actually want to check out that movie when it comes out. As soon as it comes to streaming, I'll probably check it out. And then we had the Ring of Honor World Television Survival of the Fittest elimination match. The winner of this moved on to the six-way elimination on the card. We had Jack Cartwheel and Brian, and Brian Keith. Um... Two wrestlers who have completely different styles. Styles make fights. We talk about that all the time. The power, the just powerfulness of Brian Keith. I would compare him to Bradshaw. I've said this about one called Manners as well. But Brian Keith is kind of that Bradshaw type. Jack Cartwheel is more of this flippy guy who does a lot of cartwheels. I see him a lot on Game Changer Wrestling and on Gringo Loco's uh, Lucha for WrestleMania Weekend. Um, but these two guys just going at it. I mean, the winner moves on to that match because the chance of the Ring of Honor Television Championship. I ended up giving the match three and a half. Brian Keith got the victory, which is really neat. He's from Texas. Got a Texas pop there. So he'll be on the main card. And then the main event was Dino Garcia going up against GCW Heavyweight Champion Blake Christian. I love them. I love the kind of these two young guys who just want to have a match, you know. They're on the pre-show, but they took it like, hey, this is a big match. We need to get eyes on it. Let's go out there and put on a match. Three and a half stars. Daniel Garcia getting the victory there. Loved every minute of it. I think these both are young, talented wrestlers who have a bright future in pro wrestling. Okay, now we had the mega card. Start to finish, over five hours total for the pre for the, the zero hour and everything. Thir Twelve matches. Is that what the official total is? 11, so 10 matches, and then one is kind of broke off into two pieces. Um, first match, we had the AAA Mega Championship on the line. We had champion El Hero del Vikingo versus Black Taurus. First good 5-10 minutes of this match. It was 16 minutes long, so probably the first 5-7 to seven minutes of it. Black Taurus was able to block everything Vikingo did, was able to power through a lot of those moves. Vikingo did a flip to the outside, and Taurus just caught him out of midair. I mean, he's catching a 200-pound dude out of midair when there's wide receivers that can't catch a football. Um, and just overpowered him. And one, one thing that Ian Riccoboni and Chris Coleman were talking about is Black Taurus has wrestled so many guys like the Kingo in AAA that he knows how to defend against those moves. He knows, hey, when this move is coming, things that I need to do. So that was kind of helpful. You know, helpful. These guys only match, match one other time. They've been in a lot of tag matches, but one-on-one. -on -one. So you had a lot of that. Then you had Vikingo just as time went on, the high, you know, the high flying moves were able to kind of get the best of Black Taurus. There's a couple times where Vikingo, one in particular, he'd actually do a 6:30 to the outside. He ended up running across, jumping on the rope to do the springboard. I don't know if the rope just wasn't tight enough or if he lost his footing, but he kind of slipped the bullet and fell back on the ring. He was jumped down in the ring, did it again, and went to, did the same thing. The third time he goes over, you can see he kind of changed, okay, can't do that, but he was able to jump up there, steady himself, and just do kind of a swan time. Um, he did a 720 at one point, because even Caprice Coleman was like, 630, 40, it was something. And he and Rick and was like, 720. <laughs> I'm like, oh my god, it was crazy. But just, yeah, the king is so good at what he does, just everywhere. Um, I ended up giving the match four and a quarter. Uh, El Hero Devil Kingo retaining his AAA title. He is almost to the second highest 
ever for that title. The longest reign was, uh, what was, they didn't actually say, the second longest reign was uh, Kenny Omega's 765 days. And right now the Kingos had 743. Um, so let's see here. 735 was El Texo Jr. had that. He beat that already. Uh, oh, maybe that's maybe he has the second. King Omega has the longest. Maybe that's what they were saying. They mentioned the second longest, which Kenny had it had to vacate it November of 21. That's when the Kingo won it in December of 21, and he's had it 743 days and defend that thing everywhere. Um, and I mean everywhere. I've seen so many independent shows that he's been on. It's been crazy. Um, next up, we have the Ring of Honor World Six-Man Titles on the line. We had the Mogul Embassy, Bishop Khan, Brian Cage, and Tyler Leona. Leona and Khan actually had a great showing at World Tag League for New Japan Pro Wrestling, so it's been really neat seeing them blossom over there. They went up against TMDK, Brad Dutito, um, Kazori Fujita, and Shane Haste. Um, these guys are actually with part of Team DK with Zack Sabre Jr. as the leader of that group. Shane Haste and Mickey Nichols, who's also in the group, they were actually TM61 in, in NXT years ago, one of the, one of the better ta upcoming tag teams from Australia that never really got it. They got hurt a lot. They never really got that big break. Um, but other than that, Team DK has been a really badass group. But when you have guys the size of Kong, Cage, and Leona, you can take it to almost anyone. 12 minutes this match lasted. It actually produced some great wrestling. Mogul Embassy retained their tag sick man titles with, of course, Prince Nana. My buddy Prince Nana. If you have an honor club, go back and watch Chapter 2 Hate. Um, it's from 2010. Um, there's a spot where me and my nephew were there. We're sitting on, when they came out of the, came out of the curtain, we're sitting on the aisle. Prince Nana was making fun of people, pointed at me, and there's actually video I've seen on, on streaming, and I actually have the the, tape, the, the DVD of me going to Prince Nana. So yeah, my buddy Prince Nana. Um, it's, it's been a family joke since then. Every time I see Prince Nana, we just, we just laugh. Um, but overall, a really solid match. I give it three and a half. This actual match over-delivered to what I thought it would be. Next up, we had Ethan Page versus Tony Nese in an I Quit match. Um, and there's a lot of story belonging with this. Mark Sterling is the manager of Tony Nese. They were he's trying to gain people to be part of Mark Sterling Productions. They wanted Ethan Page. He did not declined. So there's always been a back and forth there. And trying to get Ethan Page over to Mark Sterling. And every time Tony Nese had a match, Mark Sterling gets involved, like managers do. So, Ethan, I guess, at one point in time, wasn't as physical fit as he is now. And Tony Nese brought that up. I showed a picture or something and made fun of him for it. And so, Ethan came back at him and something back and forth. And the I Quit match came up and they settled on it. And then Jerry Lynn, who's one of the former Ring of Honor World Heavyweight Champion, one of the three judges or three uh, ambassadors, whatever you want to call them, for Ring of Honor. He said that I quit match, but Mark Sterling would be handcuffed to the ring. Well, when this match goes to start. Mark Sterling didn't want to be handcuffed, so Mark Mark Henry came out to force him to be handcuffed. He still got involved. Um, Tony Nese ended up being two on one. He ended up getting the key from the uh, ringside and ended up unlocking. Mark Sterling. These two went at it. It was two on one for a bit. We had eventually Scorpio Sky, who's friends with Ethan Page, come down, attack Mark Sterling, took Mark Sterling out. Well, now the handcuffs were involved. Tony Nese ended up handcuffing Ethan Page and was beating the tar out of him. He actually told him before uh, Scorpio Sky came down, he was going to handcuff him. He was going to hit him in the head with a 40 pound weight. 45 pound weight and send the video to his wife and kids and so he got personal with it and that's when Sterling was doing the beat down too so we came two on one that's when Scorpio that's what brought Scorpio Sky out who helped get rid of Mark Sterling made it one on one again 
Ethan Page ended up using the handcuff this to handcuff. He got handcuffed, and again, Tony Nese ended up beating him with him. And then Ethan ended up getting out of the handcuffs. He got the key from whoever had it. And ended up putting the handcuffs on Tony Nese and actually ended up choking him with the handcuffs. He had the handcuffs like this. It was like choking him. And Tony Nese said, I quit. 20 minutes later, I give it three and a half. I mean, it had a lot of, you know, the Mark Sterling getting involved, not being handcuffed, and then Scorpio Sky coming down. It's like, eh. So I was, like, I was about a three and a half on that. Um, if somebody goes a little bit more, hey, I get it. That's the cool thing about pro wrestling. 90% opinion, 10% fact. The fact is, Ethan Page won an I Quit match. What you thought of it may be different. Um, I give it three and a half. So we just had three, two big matches. The I Quit match, the AAA match. Now we needed that kind of match. So we got Alla Rose versus Burt Vixen. We had a 2 minute and 41 second squash match. Which was good because it gave people time to go, <laughs> It's been big so far. And so Nala Rose won that. I give it one star. Then we had the Ring of Honor World Television Survival of the Fittest six-way elimination match for the vacated title that title that uh, Samoa Joe vacated. So we had Kyle Fletcher, Brian Keith, Dalton Castle, Commander, Lee Johnson, and Lee Moriarty. Now, within that, you had Kyle Fletcher part of Don Callis family. You have Brian Keith Texan from the area. You had Dalton Castle, former television champion, former world champion. You had Commander, who's part with Lucha Brothers. You had Lee Johnson, who was being recruited to join Shane Taylor Productions. Lee Moriarty is in Shane Taylor Productions. And so you kind of had a little dynamic with all of them. You ended up having Lee Moriarty submit Lee Johnson eight minutes into the match. Then you had Lee Moriarty pin Dalton Castle 11 minutes into the match. You're like, okay, Lee Moriarty's going to run the table. Then you had Brian Keith actually pin Lee Moriarty. So the final three was Kyle Fletcher, Brian Keith, and Commander, which, okay, I thought there was a chance that Brian Keith might win this. Um, I was actually kind of looking forward to that. Then you had Kyle Fletcher pin Brian Keith. Then you had Kyle Fletcher versus Commander. This piece of it was... Nine minutes. It could have went on forever. This match was wild to start out with. Because they had the elimination. It had just everybody kind of going after everyone. And then when you come down to Kyle Fletcher and Commander. Kyle Fletcher part of Aussie Open with Mark Davis. We, he's the tank. And Kyle Fletcher is a Ferrari. If Kyle Fletcher is a Ferrari... Commander is a freaking sports car, or whatever. No, name another sports car. These two guys had nine minutes of just <laughs> craziness. Um, they had so many false finishes, so many near pins, so many kind of amazing moves where you they hit a move, it's like, oh damn. Um, but yeah, it was just craziness. Um, dives to the outside, drop kicks. Freaking flips and everything. 26 minutes almost this match lasted start to finish. And your new Ring of Honor World Television Champion, Kyle Fletcher. Um, I hope they have a rematch, Fletcher and Commander, because this match was that, this this little piece of the match was that good. But overall, this match was absolutely amazing. I give it four and a half star. Match of the night. We still got a bunch, bunch of time left. Bunch of matches left. We still got four matches left. <laughs> Uh, next up, we have the Ring of Honor Pure Title. Say, so, yeah, you needed that mat based kind of just pure wrestling match, which is what this was. Champion Wheeler Yuta versus Tom Lawler, filthy Tom Lawler. For those of you who are new to Ring of Honor, you don't know what Pure Title means. A Pure Title is a mat based title, so you get three rope breaks. So, what that means is you hold the rope, they break the hold, you can do that three times. Once you exhaust your three rope breaks, you can be pinned or submitted inside the in the ropes. You get one close hit to the face. You, you get warned on the first one. You get DQ'd on the second one. No one can interfere in a match. So for Will or Yuta, if, BBC, if BCC would have came out and interfered, they could have got fired. Um, I think what's the other rule with it? Yeah, you can hit anywhere on the body except no low blows. 
So yeah, there's certain rules you got to follow, and, and the rope breaks is a big one. And typically, Willer Yuta doesn't go through his rope breaks. He did here, which was weird for him. Um, but then once he did, Tom Mahler could submit him, and you know the next rope break wouldn't break it. Tom Mahler had a submission hold on him, but Willer Yuta was able to get out of it. Um, just just pure mat wrestling, basically. Zack Sabre Jr. would be awesome in this. He's done it before. Um, this is a pure rules match. Will you end up getting the victory by submission over Tom Waller? I ended up giving it three and a quarter. It's a good match. It's one of those matches like, oh, okay, cool. And you move on. <laughs> Next up, you had Keith Lee versus Shane Taylor. The history of this is if we go back to... Let me find it here. When Keith Lee signed with WWE NXT... Before that is how far this match, the history of this match goes back. If we're talking 2018, it looks like. Yeah, around 2018, 2017. In Ring of Honor, Shane Taylor and, and um, Keith Lee were tag team partners. They were the number one contenders for the tag titles. The match was announced. They were advertising the match. Keith Lee signed with WWE. So obviously the match didn't happen. St. Taylor thought, okay, Keith just up and left. He didn't want to be a partner anymore. He didn't want us to be friends anymore. Keith wanted a big opportunity going to WWE. Caused friction between the friends. For seven years, they didn't talk. Keith Lee, obviously, we know what happens in WWE run. He shows back up in Ring of Honor. Shane Taylor's there. The Ring of Honor was do some different owners. But guess what? The friction stayed. The only way to solve that is have a fight. So these two guys, two big guys, athletic big guys, went out there and just had a fight. Fight in all fights. 14 minutes, Keith Lee, Shane Taylor. They did, off the freaking top rope, only thing you could, only thing I could possibly call that move was a Spanish fly Canadian destroyer kind of modified. Because it's almost like they did the flip you would of a Canadian, but kind of they were almost together like a Spanish fly. But it was like, what just happened? As big as Shea Taylor is and as big and powerful as Keith Lee is, the, and the match starts with them just trying to knock one another down and they couldn't do it. 14 minutes of this. 14 minutes of just hoss fight. I ended up giving it three and a quarter. Keith Lee ended up at the end of the day getting the victory. The two of them, Ring of Honor, Code of Honor, shook hands. Can they coincide again? You never know. Did that make up for that time that maybe Shane Taylor realized, hey, match it, you know, the grass isn't always greener. You came back, but you had the opportunity. Only time will tell on that. Next up, we had one of the wildest matches of the night. Initially, it was fight to honor Jay Briscoe. One year ago, at Final Battle 2022, was Jay Briscoe's last Ring of Honor match. The double dog collar match against FTR. Briscoe's became 13-time champions. They had one more match in 2023, in 2022, against main event at House of Glory. They put over main event. They lost the House of Glory tag titles. We all know what happened three weeks later. The unfortunate loss of Jay Briscoe at age of 39, one of the greatest wrestlers in period in wrestling history. Um, a Jay Briscoe shirt was in the laundry, so second best thing. GCW, the Briscoes were three time, three time, three time GCW tag team champions, so I thought it was appropriate. This match started out because of honoring that. We had Blackpool Combat Club, Brian Nielsen, former Ring of Honor champion, first time back in Ring of Honor in 15 years, versus former Ring of Honor champion Claudio Castagnoli, versus John Moxley, first ever Ring of Honor match, besides a dark match back in the day, which I didn't know. Teaming up against FTR, Cash Wheeler, Doc, Dax Harwood, teaming with Mark Briscoe, obviously J uh, Jay's brother, this was kind of, this was supposed to just be a fight to honor people that love Jay Briscoe, or respect to Jay Briscoe, that have wrestled Jay Briscoe, to just have a fun match, and go with it. 
18, almost 19 minutes in, a double count out. That piece of the match was probably was four star. Plus, then they ended up counting double count out. Then you had them getting ready to announce that you had Mark Bris or uh, yeah Mark Briscoe grab the microphone and says, "Don't oh, you I can say it?" and goes, "We need to have for honor my brother. We need to have a fight without honor because Jay fight, fall without honor sometimes." And we need to restart this fucking match. Soon as, and I guess, uh, Ian Riccomani said, he, I guess he has, you know, obviously the earpiece, the Tony in the back. Tony's like, yeah, I'm signing off on this. Soon as they ring the bell, freaking Mark Briscoe dropped that mic to dive off the stage on the freaking, everybody on the BCC, and it was on. They're fighting up in the crowd. They took almost 11 minutes to just fight without honor. You had people going through. You had a freaking ladder come out with barbed wire on it. You had freaking Claudio take a spot on that. You had Mark Briscoe take a spot on that. You had Claudio up in the fighting with people. You had freaking, I think it was Cash Wheeler throw a freaking beer or something in the face of Claudio. You just had chaos around the inside. Tables, tacks. You had them pull out a bucket. I think the bucket they said had Jay's picture on it. And there was bar pieces of barbed wire and tacks. So it was a Jay Briscoe fight without honor match, which, okay. This match, by this 10 minutes to this, almost 11 minutes, was literally almost four star by itself. Overall, I give the match four and a half. I kind of put both pieces together. I'm going with four and a half on that. Um, it was just amazing. Chaotic, crazy, just bonkers. You had freaking Mark Persco hit a J Driller on, uh, I think he hit it on Danielson and got the pin on the chairs, middle of the ring, one, two, three. Mark Persco and FTR wins the fight without honor and honoring the late J Briscoe. Um, yeah, that was hella cool. Four and a half star. Um, but uh, obviously something that big, you kind of had to get pretty down a little bit. We had during the pre-show, the zero hour, we had an interview with Anthony Henry. He's looking for, or no, Eddie Kingston with TK. Eddie's looking for a fight. TK was talking about the Continental Classic and the and his match tomorrow against Daniel Garcia. And Anthony Henry came up and said something about he wanted to fight, wanted the match. And so TK is like, okay, put them two together. And basically he told Anthony Henry, if you can last 10 minutes or beat Eddie Kingston, you will be the first competitor for the winner of the Continental Classic who had the, the American Triple Crown, they're the Ring of Honor Strong title, or the Ring of Honor title, in New Japan Wrestling Strong and the Continental Classic. And uh, so you had made this match. Okay, cool. You kind of put it in a place where, okay, we need to kind of come down from the fight without honor. We need to kind of relax before we get to that main event. So we had Eddie Kingston versus Anthony Henry. Did exactly what it needed to do. Two and a half star. Eddie Kingston got the win. Less than six minutes. It was like, okay, now we can breathe. Then the main event. Ring of Honor, Women's World Title Online. First time ever in Final Battle history. Athena, defending her title versus Billy Starks. I love the history they have of this because Billy Starks was a minion for Athena. Athena treated her like dirt, treated her like a slave, basically. And then was like, okay. And then Billy Starks was like, well, I don't want to do this anymore. Well, you don't have a choice. Billy Stark stood up to Athena, which led to this match. 28 and a half minutes of a women's match. One of the best women's matches of 2023. You had Billy Starks get busted open pretty early in it. You had Athena doing things that she hasn't really done since she was Ember Moon back in the day. The both these women just, it was more of a fight than it was anything. You had, at one point, you had Athena going to the announce table, clearing the announce table off, throwing water at Ian Riccomani and Caprice Coleman, and was going to put Billy Stark to the announce table. They ended up fighting on the announce table. You had Billy Starks. Athena was laying by the ringside, by the barrier. She went, Billy Starks went full four into the frick, and going into the Athena, Athena moved. She need the freaking barrier. Later on, I think right after that, you had Athena do a freaking um, 
shoved and drop, shoved and drop kicked into the two Billy Starks into the barrier, and the barrier didn't move much. And you could see it hurt. I mean, it was like spine into the metal. Um, these two just tore each other apart. You had more blood in this women's match than you had in War Games. Combined, both of them. None. A lot. Both women were bleeding at the end. Athena was able to submit Athena. Or Athena was able to submit Billy Starks. She won by submission. Four star. We ended this marathon of a show with a four star women's match. That was second to none anything we've seen in 2023, in my opinion. We had Billy Starks go to walk away from Athena. Athena, uh, Athena grabbed her, pulled her back, and, and, and Billy Starks goes, what do you want from me? I want you to be my minion. They end up high-fiving, hugging. So it looks like Billy Starks and Athena are back together. Uh, which, okay. But yeah, what a match. What a card. Uh, three three matches, four star and more. Four matches, four star and more. Triple A mega titles, four and a quarter. The TV title, uh, Survival of the Fittest, was four and a half. The Fight Without Honor was four and a half. And then this match was four. Marathon of a show, but definitely worth the $9.99 for Honor Club. Now you can watch the weekly stuff, the history of it, and you get this just amazing show. Um, TK had said in the press conference about people attacking AEW, which there's been a lot of that on social media lately, and that he's here for the fight, and talked about other companies going against WWE, Vern Gagne's and Ted Turner's, and them going out of business, and somebody brought up in one of the responses about TNA still in business. Here's the thing. TNA came in in 2002 with Jeff, Jeff Jarrett and Jerry Jarrett running it. They couldn't afford to try to hang with WWE. They had to bring in a partner in Panda Energy, which was Dixie Carter's dad's company. Because they brought in Panda Energy as a partner, Dixie Carter got a job. The Jarrett's ended up leaving. Dixie Carter damn near ran the place out of business. They ran out of money, basically. They were basically bankrupt. You had wrestlers, the Harris brothers, paying for shows. You had to find places that you could cheaply put on a show. You almost had nothing. The company basically went bankrupt. That's why they ended up changing the name from TNA to Impact Wrestling, a new start under the Anthem group, and then Anthem's going to revise the TNA name in 2024. So people that started TNA weren't in there now. So it basically went out of business. WCW went out of business, all trying to challenge the juggernaut that's WWE. Tony's not doing that. Tony's in for the long haul. I see a lot of people online say, well, AEW's losing money. So? Is it yours? It's not. I see, see somebody commented because of what Tony said, he wishes AEW go out of business now. Really? Why? We don't need a, we don't need a monopoly. We need AEW. We need TNA. We need Ring of Honor. We need NXT. We need all these other promotions. The healthier the overall wrestling business is, the better it is. And if you, what's the best part of WWE, period? In the history of WWE, since I've been watching since 1995, what's been the best era? The Attitude Era. Why? Competition. What makes WWE so good right now? Well, yeah, Trip is the creative. Competition. There's an era there. In between WCW and AEW, there's no real, comp no real competition. Greg Cutley was your World Heavyweight Champion. Do I gotta say more? Last year, 2021, 2022, a lot of, more in 22 than in 21, but in 2022, each week, this week was the lowest ratings in raw history. This week was the lowest ratings in raw history. Why? Because Vince was still in charge. You sell the company to TKO, you put Triple H in charge of creative, guess what? You have what you have now. A lot of that has to do with AEW. A lot of it has to do with Ring of Honor. Look at, you, look, look at the people that are supposedly going to main event WrestleMania. CM Punk and Seth Rollins, both former Ring of Honor champions. Roman Reigns and Cody Rhodes. Or Cody Rhodes, former Ring of Honor champion. Like I said in a, tw in a tweet or a post or whatever you want to call it. Punk would not be back in wrestling if it wasn't for AEW. Cody Rhodes would not be a main eventer if it wasn't for Cody Rhodes and AEW. 
If you remember, Stardust got fired from WWE as Stardust, as a tag team guy with Gold Dust. He goes and bets, put, bets on himself, Ring of World Heavyweight Champion, New Japan Pro Bullet Club. Did all in. Went to AEW to come home and finish his story. He couldn't have finished his story anywhere else. The story is, his dad was never WWE Champion. His dad never could get over the hump to win WWE Championship. He won the NWA title. Cody did too, but never won the WWE title. Cody wants to do that. CM Punk, he got fired from WWE. He left the business because he had a better taste in his mouth. He even said there's so many opportunities for him to come back. He didn't do any of it. He saw what AEW was doing and decided to come back. Do you really think if it wasn't for AEW, Punk would be back in WWE right now? No, he wouldn't have. AEW brought Punk back his love for the business. Punk said on collision, put down WWE, which is hilarious. And then he goes, I'm home now in WWE. Dude, whatever. But, so yeah. The business, the pro wrestling business needs AEW, just like it needs WWE. Ring of Honor is a stepping stone to AEW to wherever. This show, Ring of Honor Final Battle, was one of the greatest shows of the year. I would put this show against any show for 2023. That is the review of Ring of Honor Final Battle. As always, thanks for watching Robert Sports Show, and don't just have a great day. Have a spiffy day. Robert Sports Show, your YouTube leaders, sports channel content.